I think there's a very strong uh, intrinsic uh, unity between land use change pattern and what needs to be done in the global south. I think that is very important. What will be the land use pattern is to link us to the adaptive strategies in the global south. I think with that, now let me just give you one, even if we go zero carbon in the global south, even if we say not a single car we are going to buy, even if we say we are not going to construct a single highway, not a single house, despite that we are doomed. So the only way, because it's already at the tipping point, we've seen the global watch, climate watch, we are already doomed. Our point is that when we do this, we have to build in a very adaptive uh, space. And the adaptive space has to be, which is linked to climate resilient infrastructure. And that has to be built, not just infrastructure, but capacities of the people. Because we know that the floods are going to happen. We know that extreme weather events are going to happen. I mean, come what may, in that, how do we protect the working people? How do we protect the most vulnerable people? The women, the marginalized section, the elderly people. We have probably 12%, perhaps 12% of the population is elderly, you know, in Global South. What do you do with that? So I think that is what the focus has to be. We are lost. It's as simple as that. You know, because there's a strong interconnection between biodiversity and we as homo sapiens and what the climate scientists are pointing out is uh, that uh, this intrinsic relationship the moment we have a synapse in this uh, a break uh, it will severely affect the whole question of, uh, uh, of of evolutionary process there's a strong interconnection between honeybees and human beings honeybees are lost we are lost but of course the capital solution is why can't we have robotic honeybees and uh, uh, so biodiversity is not, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very large realm, I would say. And in, in that ra large realm, uh, there are different sets of uh, interventions that needs to be done. And one of the uh, way of uh, uh, the, the, the interventions could be uh, that countries should adapt uh, and adopt a biodiversity act. And the biodiversity act, which should uh, focus on the multi, uh, uh, not just the, uh, uh, the, 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 the uniform pattern of agriculture or the uniform pattern of forestry, but why can't we have uh, you know, a mixed uh, uh, agriculture and mixed forestry, which will further enhance uh, the whole uh, uh, question of biodiversity. And I think there is also a relationship between biodiversity and the commons the rural commons and the urban commons. So biodiversity is not just linked to the countryside, that's the rural part of the world, but I think it is also linked to the urban uh, question because there's huge biodiversity that exists in the urban, uh, but the way we are building our cities, the way we are planting trees, uh, you know, one particular species that we think about, I think that is what is killing biodiversity. What is the mode of production? If you produce more and you segregate, there's no point. The point is you do not have to produce that. 80% of the waste that gets generated in the cities is neither recyclable nor biodegradable. What do you do with that? So you will do some plastic recycling, but then again you're throwing microplastics back to the ecosystem. So the point is a solution for a waste to energy plant is not the solution. A solution is A, don't produce that. B. Of course, you can have people's participation. You can have mobility. I'm, I'm not sure about the entire global south, but take, for example, India, the country that I come from. 80% of the people, the working people, who commute in my cities do not travel more than six to seven kilometers. So if that is the average commute, then what do you want? You want flyovers for the guzzlers, or you want pedestrian paths in the cycle tracks, so you know? So, so the solution is not technology where you build flyovers, you bring in, you know, your guzzlers, technology, EV cars. No, the solution is create those spaces, give it back to the people, your pedestrian paths, your cycle tracks, your public transport. That is the essence, that is quintessential for our survival, even for adaptive and mitigating strategies also.